What is the Goldilocks zone? Uh, Another of your big bedrocks of your book. Well, uh, this is something. This is one way that the physicists refer to something that they call the fine tuning of uh, of the universe, or sometimes they talk about it, the anthropic fine tuning. Mm -hmm. The idea is that the most fundamental parameters of physics uh, fall within very narrow ranges or tolerances outside of which we have discovered life would not be possible. Even basic chemistry would not be possible. Mm -hmm. So the force responsible for the expansion of the universe uh, called the cosmological constant is uh, fine-tuned and accepted value is to one part in 10 to the 90th power. Mm -hmm. So a smidge faster or slower in that expansion and you either get a heat death of the universe or you get a big crunch, a great black hole. In either case, life is not possible. And that's just one of many parameters that fall within that kind of a sweet spot. So sometimes the, the physicists do talk about uh, are living in a Goldilocks universe. Uh, Luke Barnes has written a wonderful book about the fine tuning of physicists who also did his PhD at Cambridge, has written a book called The Fortunate Universe. Mm -hmm. So these types of terms are now making their way into physics because physicists did not expect that life would depend upon such an exquisitely and, and improbably uh, arranged set of, of basic parameters. But there we have it, they did, this is what they found. But again, that comes back to the idea of a designer of all this. Well, one of the, one of the scientists who first discovered these fine tuning parameters was uh, Fred Hoyle. Mm -hmm. And Hoyle was a, a pretty aggressive scientific atheist. He opposed the Big Bang and even gave the Big Bang its name, the Big Bang, as a kind of pejorative to, 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 uh, to make fun of the, the, the concept. But after he discovered some of these fine-tuning parameters, he had a shift in, in his philosophical perspective, in his worldview. And he was later quoted as saying that um, a common sense interpretation of the data, the fine-tuning data, suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with physics and chemistry to make life possible. And I would say I, lo I love the way the monkeys always make it into the origins <laughs> discussion, even if it's in physics. It always goes back to yeah, monkeys. Uh, always um, monkeys, either at a typewriter or something. Yeah. There are other uh, scientific hypotheses that don't use God as an explanation for all this. One is the simulation matrix theory, which Elon Musk talks about. Uh, or the idea of a multiverse. And when I had Neil deGrasse Tyson on, the astrophysicist, yeah. he said this. What was there before the beginning of the universe? Everyone asks this question. What's the simple answer? Oh, I, I, I'm delighted I can respond to you. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we got top people working on it, OK? You know what? There may have been a multiverse. <laughs> I like that. I like the honesty. Well, we, saying, so we genuinely don't know. People I'm, just don't know, right? We don't know. There might have been a multiverse that's birthing universes and we're one of them, but that just pushes the question one step further before that. What was around before the multiverse? So we just don't know. It's, it's a frontier question right now. What is your response? I mean, you know, a lot of astrophysicists and Elon Musk and others think it's actually about the multiverse. A, for those who don't know, what is the multiverse? The, the, and what's your yeah, response to that? Yeah, sure. The multiverse is the idea that, yes, the universe is incredibly finely tuned against all odds to make life possible. But the explanation for that is not that there was a cosmic fine tuner, an intelligence who set the universe up so that life would be possible, but rather that there's a, a billion or gabillions of other universes out there that have different combinations of these different settings of these different parameters, and that ours just happens to be the lucky one. And, and the reason that we have life in our universe is not that it was designed for life, but rather there was a kind of giant cosmic lottery that, that is responsible and that life must have arisen somewhere. And again, we just happen to be in the lucky universe. Oh, and my response. Yes. <laughs> yes, right. Well, the, 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 uh, anthro the, the multiverse hypothesis is specifically relevant to explaining this, this fine tuning. But there's a problem with it, and that is that, and, uh, that if you have all these other universes out there, the very existence of these other universes does not explain the fine tuning in our universe. And here's why. Um, if those other universes are separate from our own, then there's no causal connection between them. So whatever happens in those other universes has no effect on our universe, including it has no effect on whatever process was responsible for setting the fine tuning. So in virtue of that, multiverse proponents have had to propose a kind of common cause of all the universes, mm -hmm. a universe generating machine of some kind that could allow them to portray our universe as uh, the lucky winner of a giant cosmic lottery. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, the rub comes in. But is that possible? Well, yeah, there's a problem with it. And that is that all of the different universe generating mechanisms that have been proposed 
some based on something called string theory, others based on something called inflationary cosmology, themselves require prior fine-tuning in the universe generating mechanisms. And so you explain the, the fine-tuning in this universe by invoking a universe generating mechanism, but that mechanism in turn has to be finely tuned, and so you're right back to where you started without an ultimate explanation for fine-tuning. And yet we know from our experience that when we find something that's finely tuned, think of a French recipe or an internal combustion engine or a radio dial, fine-tuning always requires, in our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning, it always requires a fine-tuner, an intelligence. So given that the multiverse hasn't explained, given an ultimate explanation for fine-tuning, the best explanation for fine-tuning is still intelligent design.